Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I'm going to be talking about the Reality Check program and how it came about. A lot of people have been asking me that. Before I get started, please check us out on Patreon. We have a bunch of different level programs. Check us out on YouTube, obviously the Action Crew, and also our podcast. We are getting better and better at the podcast and we have some great interviews and very interesting people like the redemption story. First of all, let me explain the Reality Check program and how it came about. The Reality Check program right now is one of the top programs in the United States. It's a four-part program built on my life, meaning uh, what I did in my past, not the good part, and how I did that. And then the second part is what prison is really like. And that's, the, I don't bullshit it. I don't sugarcoat it. I tell it like it is. The third part is what you're gonna lose. And that's your kids and your family. And, it, and it, it's really very powerful because it doesn't have anything to do with money. It has to do with the things that really are important in your life. And the fourth section is avoiding and dissolving bad associations. And that's how a young person can try get get away from the, the troubled people he's around. You know, when I developed the reality check program, I got out of prison, and this is a great story. I got out of prison in August 24, 2007. And a friend comes up to me and says, hey, Larry, I need a favor. I said, what the fuck? You want me to break somebody's legs? I just got out of business, man. Leave me alone. He says, no, no, no. He goes, I caught my 16-year-old uh, son smoking weed, and he told me, fuck you, Dad. Where have you ever been? I said, your son told you that? I'll talk to your kid. I just so happen to have pictures that you can't even do today. It's how powerful this is. You can't even do this today. I have pictures of people in prison, me on the yard with other prisoners, murderers, mobsters, a lot of different people in prison. And you can't even take those pictures today anymore. So why did I keep them? Why did I send them home? Why did I have them? I don't know. So I often think, man, this is meant to be. So anyway, I took these pictures over to the kid's house. And the guy was a golfer, and I was a golfer. So he said to me, he goes, hey, lad, he goes, uh, I don't know what to do. He goes, just can you talk to him? And he had a gazebo, so he says, I'll sit out at the gazebo. He's inside. He's a big kid, 16. He's a smart ass. I said, I'll take care of that. Now, I can be pretty intimidating myself, but I don't call it scared straight because I don't ever yell at a person. I don't believe in that. I don't think that's the way you get through to young people. So I walk up to the kid, and I said, I use two curse words. I says, uh, you told your father where the fuck he, uh, he's been? Let me show you where the fuck I just came from. That's all I did. I sat down, the kid's looking at me, the tattoos, the whole works. He's looking at me like, wow, who is this guy? And I started showing him pictures of kids that are dead, friends of mine that are being killed or stabbed or, or never getting out of prison. And he just, you could see his face changing as I'm telling him stories about prison and what I went through and how bad I was. And I didn't sugarcoat it because I believe in young people. I don't think you should ever sugarcoat it with young people. I think young people can hear, handle the truth. I think they need to be told the truth because I believe young people can spot bullshit a mile away and I won't bullshit them. I tell it like it is. I talk about consequences. I talk about, you know, my life, losing my 15 month old daughter when I went to prison, I got out and she was 13. Or my son who was six and I got out and he was 18. So that's rough, that's really rough. And they get it then. They really don't realize how nice they have it. Anyway, so I talked to that kid. The dad says to me, he goes, hey lad, I really appreciate it. Gives me a few bucks. And he says, hey, can I give your name to some other people? I said, sure. And I started talking to young people, making a few bucks. I said, this is great. I end up putting this exact program onto a video, a DVD at that time. And this was in 2007 or eight, probably 2008, because I got out in 2007. I was talking to people for a while. So it was about 2008. And I started talking to people. I end up getting called by juvenile court coordinator for Brevard County Jail, uh, Brevard County Court System. And she says, hey, Mr. Lawton, uh, the judge would like to see you. And, I ain't seeing no judge. I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. She wants to talk to you about your program. I go, what are you talking about? I says, I'm not seeing no judge. You got a warrant? I don't trust judges. I don't trust authority. And sure enough, she goes, no, no, you're missing it. She judge wants to talk about your program and just wants to hear about it. And, and I'll never forget the judge. His name is Judge Ryman. Nice, well, nice woman. So I go into her chambers. We find out later I'm not even supposed to be. I'm still on paper. 
I'm still on uh, parole, federal parole. I go into the courtroom and, and go into the chambers and having a meeting and I put together a little PowerPoint. Now, I don't even know how to put together a PowerPoint. Uh, my nephew, who since passed away, uh, helped me with a PowerPoint presentation, just how to do it, put it on a computer. And uh, I had a laptop, uh, an old laptop somebody gave me, and I put it on it and he told me exactly what to do. And I get into this meeting and they introduce themselves. There's about six people around the table. It's pretty interesting. And, and I just present this. I said, this is what I talk about and that's it. I have no program at this time. I just, this is what I talk about and stuff like that. They said, this is on a Friday. They said, would you like to stay for the rest of the meeting? I said, hell no, I want to get the hell out of here. You know, I'm thinking, I want to get the hell out of here. What am I doing in the back of a, ju a judge's chambers? So I get up and I leave and I, I don't think anything of it. Monday morning, the lady calls me and says, hey, Larry, I got to give you a heads up. The judge sentenced two people to your program. What fucking program? I didn't even know I had a program. From there, I actually developed the program to be the four-part program to, to have the powerful impact it has. And, and the program has grown immensely. Actually, a college came in and came in and says, we'd like to do a quantitative analysis on your program. We'd like to get the information to the, from the parents and stuff. And we'd like to call the people and do an analyst on the program. I said, sure. They did it. And they ended up calling the parents and they called people and they tracked where these kids were and did all the stuff that you're supposed to do. And they end up finding out my program has a 90% success rate of kids not getting rearrested or having any negative interactions with law enforcement. It has a 70% better change of attitudes. And that came from the parents, 70%. So that's seven out of 10 kids had a better reaction, better attitudes after the program. 43% had better school grades. I didn't even know they were doing that. And 31% had better school attendance. So in all in all, the program becomes a very, very big success. It's called the Reality Check Program. It's on my website, all of that. So anyway, I take the program and I keep doing it. And now people are getting sentenced to me in, in, from the court systems. And I'm doing, at that time, I'm doing a live program as well as, I didn't have it on video yet. I just did the live program. Now I, I put it up on the uh, website. We have a video of the program. They take tests. People, a court system can get my program, they can use it, they can implement it, they can give a person my program plus 10 hours community service or something like that. The person has to take a test afterwards to show that they watch the video. And it could have even been a very big success even with the, uh, the cruise incident in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School where he went crazy. Because if the police had my video, they could have at least tried to get to that kid. And then when the kid took the test and he saw, had signs of being a lunatic, that would have showed up. So we could have possibly prevented that. I often think of that all the time when I see stuff like that. Why aren't some organizations in school districts and police organizations more proactive? You know, there's an old saying, you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. That's a sign of lunacy. Uh, and sadly, the police and some agencies think they have it all down instead of getting with a program like mine and using it and implementing it and getting better connections with the police. So the program has that success rate. Now, I often talk to people about kids, but you know, the program is very, very successful from 18 to 30. Yes, 30. How many 18 to 30s are making stupid choices? How many do you think? So many of them are. I mean, you know, it could be drug addiction, could be just, uh, uh, you know, in a rut, could be depression, could be a lot of things. And we try to help young people get out of that uh, rut or recognize the consequences of their actions. So the program developed into the misdemeanor courts, meaning a young person under 21, over 18, but drinking. Uh, he's driving and drinking or even just got caught with alcohol or minor drug offenses, or shoplifting, or cyberbullying, or a fight with friends, or whatever it is. 
Those are the kind of charges that these kids need a wake-up call. They don't need prison time. They need to know what will happen. Well, what better way to do that than send them to a person like myself who, when they think about it and when they understand what's going on in their lives, they realize they're heading down that wrong path. Uh, I'm going to put up a couple of videos right now, and these are young people who've been through my program. So check it out. Hello. Hey guys, how you doing? How's it going? I'm here at the Reality Check program. I was charged with trespassing. I was charged with marijuana under 20 grams. I got caught with a weed case. Charged with petty theft. I'm in the Reality Check program. I just got done taking the Reality Check program. Just got done with my course. Uh, the reality check. I thought I was gonna hate it. Definitely wasn't what I thought it would be. It's not just um, someone with a degree talking that hasn't really experienced what you've been through. Thought I would come to a lot of people lecturing me. I ended up learning a lot. He's a great guy and he has taught me a lot. I made a poor decision. It ain't gonna happen again. I really, really uh, appreciate being here and uh, everything that I learned. As you just saw, those are people who went through my program and they did. And I asked them, "Hey, can you just say?" They already passed the program, so it's not like they had to say anything positive or anything like that. They just got to, you know, say what they thought of the program because it was so real. And now here's some of the comments from some judges and officials. And not only been through my program, they talk about my program. And these are officials like state attorneys, public defenders, uh, uh, sheriffs, officials. These are people who believe in helping people, and they realized... I'm the front line of the, of the situation. Yeah, the cop interacts with them, but then they're gonna listen to somebody like me. Check out these. Hi, I'm Chief Mike Force with the Lake St. Louis Police Department. I'm Blaze Tredis, public defender for Brevard and Seminole counties in Central Florida. My name is Glenn Rodman, a criminal defense attorney, former judge, former prosecutor involved with the reality check program. I'm Chief Chris Giuseppe of the Lake St. Louis Police Department. Our department is a proactive department. I believe so strongly in Larry Lawton and his program called Reality Check. Designed to help people make better choices. And also to reduce recidivism in the community. Not only me, the reason I feel so strong about it is because judges feel strong about it. Prosecutors are in agreement with it. The police look forward to having the help that they need to help get these kids off the street and get them back on the right track. So the program has such a high success rate and I ended up getting recognized on the floor of the United States Congress for this program and being the only ex-con in the United States who's an honorary police officer. Now, if you know me and you know my channel well, I'm, I tell it like it is. If there's bad cops, we need to get rid of them. If there's something good with the cops, we need to do that. Whether it's Palm Bay Police who is doing positive things. Uh, do they need improvement? Everybody needs improvement. Uh, I think law enforcement gets that now. I'm a big proponent of positive policing. You know, when I got my badge, uh, people ask me all the time, why would you do that? Because the mentor I have who does law enforcement is a man named Mike Force, who was the chief of police for 25 years. When the average tenure for a police chief is three years, and this guy had a 25-year tenure as the police chief, that says it all. But his philosophy is why I really like it. He doesn't hire people to protect and serve. Yes, they do that. But that's not, you know, the, that's what the verbiage they learned in the academy used to tell me. He says, I ask a person one thing in law enforcement, Larry, when they come to my office. I know they can put on handcuffs, they can shoot the gun, they can recite the bullshit they learn in the academy. He says, I ask them one question. Why do you want to be a police officer in this area? And if they don't say I'm here to help the community, I don't hire them. Has to come out, they want to help. He could train, he could train anybody to do anything. Can't train a person's heart. You know, he gives out awards. And if you're a police officer or a police chief watching my videos, think about this. He gives out awards for people who change flats. Young officers who speak at a church or a school, or maybe they coach Little League. He gives out awards for positive community policing. He doesn't give out awards for the most DUIs, the most arrests, because inevitably those officers are going to try to get that award and they're going to have bad arrests. Do they enforce it? Yes. Is helping the community sometimes getting the uh, idiots off the street? Absolutely. Is it getting the guy who's robbing something? Absolutely. That's helping the community. But their core, core value, core job is to help somebody. You know, it, it kind of ticks me off when I see a police officer drive by a car on the side of the road that somebody's standing there. 
Come on, stop your car, put the lights on, give that person assistance. That's what your job is. That's what it should be. That's what policing is. Policing is not, I'm the badass who's got the gun and the badge. That's why police have a rough time with communities. And my program helps with that. Because if a police agency uses my video, they're trying to help a family. You know, one woman told me this, Larry, she got the video. We have video cards for police agencies. The police agency gave the video card to a person. The person called me, says, Larry, I didn't like the police, but I'm a fan now. They try to help my kid. Whether that kid gets it or not, that parent realizes that that person is there to help their child. And you know what? You help my child, you have a, a supporter in me no matter what. So my program being developed around my life, what prison is really like, not what you see on TV. I don't glorify it. I tell some really rough stories, but they're stories that kids need to hear. They see it in GTA, they are seeing all the stuff on video games and TV. They can take what I talk about. The third part is what you're gonna lose because young kids need to see that. They need to realize what they're gonna lose and how good they really do have it. They need that, that's very important. And finally, avoiding and dissolving bad associations. And it's, it's the little things. You don't just tell a kid, don't hang out with those kids. You know, they have a uh, uh, scared, there's peer pressure, there's a lot of other ways to do that. And I explain that in, in very detailed ways. And I think it's very important for a parent to watch the video along with a kid. And you know, I was on a TV show with the Lieutenant Governor of Florida. What a nice guy, his name is Jeff Kotkamp. That man should be governor someday. He, he cares about people, he understands how to do things, and his core value is caring. Well, Jeff Kotkamp and I were on a, on a TV show, along with a judge, a very positive judge, Judge Rhonda Babb as well. And we were on a TV show, and they were talking about helping kids and programs and stuff, and my program was mentioned. The Lieutenant Governor said this, Larry, he goes, I started the Youth and Family Council for the state of Florida. He goes, and I've never seen a program more powerful than yours. It belongs in all 67 counties in the state of Florida. That program, he says, is not only good because helping prevent people from going to prison and saving the money on that end. He goes, but every time you save somebody, every time somebody watches your video and doesn't make that bad choice and doesn't go to jail, he goes, they are a productive member of society, paying taxes, supporting local businesses. So your program is not only great and saving money on the correctional end of things, on how much they spend on corrections. It's also on spending on how we can help people be productive members of society and putting money into the economy. Think about that. That's what makes my program so powerful. And the judge loves it because she needs tools to try to help these people. Not just put them in the system, not give them a record, and not just give them some anger management courses. One judge says, well, wow, what can I do? I give them anger management. Well, your program opens their eyes. That's what the Reality Check program is about. And that's how come I developed it over 10 years ago. I developed it in 2007, end of 2007 and 2008. I developed the Reality Check program, which today is still one of the most powerful programs out there to help families and to help court systems and to help police agencies. And these people need to understand it's out there. And I developed that and it is as good today as it, and it, as relevant today or more so than it was back in those days. You know, I developed it and I was told, hey, will you update it? And you know, we thought about that. And you know what the Lieutenant Governor said to me, Larry, that video is so powerful because it's raw passion. It is your passion for helping people that comes out on that video. I don't know if you could ever replicate that, he said. That video is so strong and powerful, it is what young people need to see and hear. So he even recommend not doing that. We might come out with another version, but that video is the, is, is the foundation of what I do and why I came to YouTube to help with police reform, youth initiatives, help young people make better choices. That is my goal. 
help police agencies make better choices and and not only spend their funds the right way, reduce crime, help uh, morale for police officers. We have all data that proves the program does that. We have uh, also helping people and helping the criminal justice system, meaning the courts and also prisons. Because there is a recidivism part of my program. I've developed a whole recidivism part. But I had to tell you guys how I developed it, why I developed it, and why my passion is staying where it is. You know, people ask me, Larry, how long are you going to do this? You know, until I find out I'm not making a difference and to find out I'm not wanted or liked or uh, I'm not needed anymore. I love what I do because I know I can help you. I can help the families out there. I can help young people make better choices. You know, when I talk to young people on the phone and they're happy to talk to me, I never, ever miss an opportunity to make better choices. Don't do what I did. Enjoy the videos, but make better choices. So that's what I want to tell you guys. Check it out. The link is below. You can get our videos anywhere. Check it out. Go to our website, and the video will be clips out there as well. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong. Make positive choices. Have a great day.